So, you want to start modding Fallout 4 in 2021. Either that, or you just want to see how I do it. Either way, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to install Mod Organizer 2 and how to use it properly in 2021 with its most current updates. Additionally, showing you how to install Fallout 4 Script Extender, as well as a couple of tips on organization and making things play nice with each other at the end. So, let's go ahead and start with the things that you're going to need today. First of all, is going to be 7-zip or WinRAR to open up zipped files. We're going to need the Mod Organizer 2 itself, as well as the Fallout 4 Script Extender. And all of these links will be in the description, so you can just click on that to get to where you need to go. Now, this does specifically focus on Fallout 4, but a lot of these concepts apply as well to Skyrim, Fallout New Vegas, etc. All of those games work with Mod Organizer 2, so you can use them just the same. Pretty much interchangeable information here. Now, before we start anything with Mod Organizer, you're going to need to install your game. So grab it on Steam, download it, and most importantly, launch it. You don't have to start a character or anything, but launch the game. It's going to create the necessary save files that Mod Organizer 2 is going to draw from. Otherwise, things aren't going to work exactly as intended. So download the game, launch it, and then we can start. So once you've completed that, we're going to move on to Mod Organizer 2, which you can grab, weirdly enough, on the Skyrim Special Edition Nexus. I'll have a link to that down below. It's in the MO2 section. Click there, and from there, you're going to go to the mod page. You're going to navigate to the files section. From the files section, there will be a manual download button. You're going to click it. It's going to take you to a new page that says slow download. You're going to click that unless you're a premium member. You can do fast download. Then you're going to wait for it to pop up in a new window. In the meantime, while you wait, you can endorse or donate if that's something you want to do. Once enough time has passed, you will be prompted with a pop-up as to where you want to install your file. This is just the executable file that launches an installer, so download it wherever, probably just your downloads folder or your desktop. Click save, then navigate to wherever you downloaded that folder. Make sure you kept track of that because we're going to need to click it. So this is an executable file that will prompt the installation of MO2. Once we have MO2 installed, you can delete this file. You may be prompted with the Windows Defender pop-up. If so, just click on More Info and then click Run Anyways. Now you'll be in the Installation Wizard. Go ahead and accept the license agreement. Select where you want to place your mod organizer. Now, typically for a first-time installer, you probably just want to leave this to normal. However, if you know what you want to do with your files, you can absolutely choose a different location to save your mod organizer to folders. I set up a specific file for this tutorial, so however you want to do it, go ahead and click Browse. If you need to, select a new folder and you'll be good to go. After that, just click OK and you're going to click Next. From there, it's going to ask you if you want to do the recommended install. You're going to say yes. And then do you want to create a start menu folder? In my case, I'm going to say no because I already have an installation of Mod Organizer. But for you, you're going to say yes. Click Next. And then you're going to be asked if you want a desktop shortcut. Click yes if you do. Next. And then finally, you can click Install. Once it is done installing, you will be prompted with the final window that asks you if you want to launch Mod Organizer. You can decide if you want to immediately or not, and then click Finish. Now, once you've installed it, you will have two Mod Organizer icons, one of which is your actual file, and the other one is the installer we use to install Mod Organizer. Find the installer, you can go ahead and delete it. It's going to be the one without the little shortcut icon. Now, before we move on to MO2 itself, we're going to need to grab the Fallout 4 Script Extender. So, you're going to head to the F4SE website, which will be linked in the description, and you'll be prompted with a few options. You see Fallout 4 runtime and Fallout 4 VR runtime, so obviously we're not doing VR at the moment, we're doing just Fallout 4. So we're going to click the Fallout 4 runtime 7-zip archive. Go ahead and click on that, and it's going to ask you where you want to download it. Just download this to your downloads or desktop, wherever, because again, this is just an installer. Now from there, you will have installed a 7-zip file, so hopefully you already installed 7-zip or WinRAR, something that you can open the archive to, because we're going to need the files that are inside of that folder. Once you've opened up the 7-zip folder, you will find another subfolder. You can go ahead and drag that out to your desktop, open it up, and you will see that it has a bunch of data files, including data, source, etc. A bunch of files that we're going to need to throw into our game manually. So we're going to pull our F4SE folder to the side and open up a new window. We're going to browse to wherever we have installed Fallout 4. In my case, that's the local disk. We're going to head to Program Files x86, find Steam, then Steam Apps, Common, and then Fallout 4. And then from there, we have the location we actually need. Then we're going to highlight all of the items in our F4SE folder. You technically don't need things like the README, but 
it doesn't necessarily make a difference. We're gonna drag and drop all of that stuff into our Fallout 4 folder. Make sure to drop it just into the Fallout 4 folder itself and not one of the subfolders like tools. Now you can go ahead and open up MO2 and your MO2 might look a little bit different than mine, but don't fret. I have a bunch of mods installed and I have themes set up already, but a lot of these concepts are gonna be the same. You're either going to be prompted immediately with the selection of a new instance, or you may just end up in Mod Organizer 2 itself if it automatically detects your game. Either way, you're going to click the logo in the top left to create a new instance. You'll see that I already have some set up for Fallout 4, New Vegas, Skyrim, etc. Mod Organizer 2 actually supports a lot of different games, which is super cool. So we're going to go ahead and select the Create a New Instance button. And from there, it's going to tell you what a new instance is. You're just going to go ahead and click Next. This is just what actually houses the game and all of its mods inside of Mod Organizer. You're going to want to click create a global instance, not a portable instance. Portables are not great for compatibility when you have several games. So then you can see that we have a bunch of games already detected in my library that it supports. We're just going to grab Fallout 4, click Next, and then we're going to decide where all of these data folders are going to be housed. I'm just going to select Next because I like where they're set up normally. You can feel free to change those though if you want to, by all means but it's going to change where all of that pathing is. So I like to let Mod Organizer 2 do all the work in that regard. From there, it's just gonna confirm that we're done and we're gonna click finish. Now your game is almost ready to start accepting mods, but we're gonna to need to set up the Fallout 4 script extender executable. This is gonna make it so you can actually run the mods in Fallout 4 through the F4SE rather than Fallout 4. So by default, you may have this Fallout 4 icon and you'll click run to start the game on the right there. But what we want is F4SE. Any mods that rely on the script extender for any reason will not work unless you run it from the Fallout 4 script extender executable. So we're going to need to set that up. Now, typically when you install F4SE, it will detect it automatically and it'll already be there in your menu. And if you want to launch the game, you'll just click that run button right there on the right. But let's say you open it up and it's not there. Here's how you set it up. You're going to click the green and blue cog wheels at the top left of your screen. And you can see we have a bunch of executable options. We're going to click the plus sign to add a new executable from file. And we're going to find our common directory for Fallout 4, just like we did before, and find where we have installed the F4SE loader.exe. We're going to select that. You can change the name of the file or the executable if you'd like. After that, you're going to click apply and then OK. And then the F4SE executable should now appear in that drop down menu right there. From there, you're just going to click run every time you want to play the game. But in case you don't want to open up MO2 every time, you can create a shortcut from the shortcut button and you can determine if you want it from your desktop or the start menu or however. So there are shortcut options available if you need them. Now that that's all set up, you're technically almost ready to start downloading mods, but there are still a couple of steps I want to talk about first. For starters, we're going to talk about the having. Now for paths, typically you can just leave all of these default and all the files will go where they're supposed to. But if you have a small C drive or wherever you install Fallout doesn't have enough space, I can recommend changing the mods directory to a different hard drive. However, it is very important to note that you need to do this before you install any mods. So you can change this pathing once before you install the mods, but once the mods have been installed, do not change any of these file directories or it will break your game, make mods not appear, or at worst, just tons of CTDs. So be careful. Change this directory if you know what you're doing. If not, leave these still and hope that you have enough space. Now, while we're in this menu, we're actually going to navigate to the tab right next to this called Nexus. We're going to click right there, and then we have the option to connect to Nexus. Now, I'm already connected as this is my regular profile. So what you will do is click connect to Nexus. It's going to prompt you to connect your profile from the Nexus page, which you should have already if you installed MO2. So that's pretty simple. Then also you're going to have a button down there that says associate with the mod manager links. Now you're going to click that because anytime you download with a mod manager file, you want it to associate with MO2 and not something like Vortex if you have that installed. You really only should have one manager installed, but just in case you do, this is the button you need to click before you install any mods. But so long as MO2 is your only installer, you should only have to do this once. And now before we leave this page, there is one small thing I want to talk about, which is the theme section. Completely unnecessary, purely optional, but I do like it and it's something you should know about. Your screen is probably white and very bright and intimidating, but this theme section has a bunch of preset themes to choose from that are all really great. I like the VS15 Dark series. Uh, they all have different colors, so I color coordinate all of my games, but that's just because I'm OCD. 
you can do whatever you want. There's some really cool Skyrim and Fallout themed ones in here, so go hog wild. Check out everything there is to offer in the theme section. Now it's time to actually download our first mod. So we're going to check out the Nine Iron Golf Club we talked about on the channel not too long ago. It's a really simple mod, nice and small, but really cool, and also contains a plugin so I can show off what that looks like in game. So go ahead and find the first mod you want to download off of the Fallout 4 Nexus. You're going to make sure that it's exactly what you want to download, and you're going to head to the Files section. From there, we're going to click Mod Manager Download. Now you can download mods manually, but we'll show that off later. After selecting it, you will click Slow Download, and then after a few seconds, it will be in your game. So once you hop on over to Mod Organizer 2, you may be a little confused. Where is my mod? Well, important layout. On the left here, we have all of your organization stuff, and on the right is your actual plugins. And you'll see at the top right, it does say Plugins, and then a few other tabs. You're going to want to navigate over to Downloads. From there, you will see your 9-iron that you downloaded, or whatever mod you chose to download first, with a nice green download symbol. From there, double-click the mod, and other tutorials may say to click OK at this point, but I prefer to click Manual to check if the data directory is set correctly, and in this case, it actually wasn't. Not that that's a bad thing or that anything's broken with the mod, it just means that there's no data set on the top level. All we're going to do is right-click Data, click Set Data Directory, and then BAM, all looks good, and then we click Install. This just ensures that the game loads everything in the most efficient way possible. Now we're going to scroll down, we see our mod installed, it is not yet activated. First, we're going to go and check out the plugins, where we scroll all the way down. We'll go ahead and activate the mod on the left side, and you will see a new plugin appear on the right, which means it is all installed correctly, and everything went perfectly. Now, let's say that you need to install a mod manually. It's not often that you do, but in some cases you may need to. In that case, you head over to the Nexus once again, you will see the option to click Manual Download. You will click that. That's going to take you again to the option where you choose Slow Download. Wait a couple seconds, and then it's going to prompt you as to where you want to install the mod. Now, you're going to need to decide a permanent spot to keep these mods, but once you've done that, go ahead and click Download. Now, when it comes to installing that manual mod we downloaded, you're actually going to click at the top left. There is a little icon with a disk that says install a new mod from archive. We're going to select that. We're going to head to where we downloaded that mod. Here we have the nine iron zip file. We're going to click it and click open. From there, we're prompted with the same quick install menu. I'm going to click manual, set the data directory again. Everything looks good. And there's the mod. Pretty simple. And now one last thing I want to talk about is organization, something that is really, really cool when it comes to the mod organizer too. There's actually a lot of organization utilities that help with keeping your game looking very nice and clean for your sake. Now, it's important to note that the left side here and the right side are two different lists. I get questioned about this a lot. The right side is your actual plugins. This is your actual load order. The left side, while you have a lot of controls over here, moving, say, AWKCR below Armorsmith Extended will have no effect on your plugin load order on the left. However, it will if you were to move it on the right because these are your actual plugins. So the left side is really just for your own organization, which is great. You can move things around to group items together by category and even has these really cool category options. So if you want one of those, you simply right click, select all mods, and then click create a new separator. And then you can enter the name of the separator. We'll call this one example. And you will see that we have a new separator right here called example. And then you can move that around. It just really helps with organization. I love it. I have everything categorized, even down to the weapon type. If we scroll down, you'll see that I have armors based on faction. And then weapon fixes, weapons explosives, weapons heavy, energy, etc. I go a little OCD with my weapon mod organization. However, it does help a lot and helps me navigate things when I'm looking to fix problems. So people ask how I have such a stable game. This is a small part of it, but a much bigger part of it is the actual plugin organization. Now, without any special tools, you can actually use this system I have on the left here to keep a pretty stable game. All you have to do is create all of this organization first, install the mods, but do not enable them, and then enable them in the order that you've created, and this will actually reflect it pretty similar on the plugin side of things. Now, you can always, of course, just move the plugins manually yourself, say move armor keywords down here, but that's gonna take a long time. You can do all the organization on the left side here with the categories, and then just enable them in chronological order, and that'll make things a little bit nicer. So long as you know the general idea of where plugins should be in your load order, this is a good system. 
Now, if you want proper control and easy bug fixes, you're going to want to download a program called Loot. Loot will organize all of that stuff for you, find conflicts, and make everything run beautifully. Now, I'm not going to go over the exact details of installing that. If you want a full tutorial on actual stabilization for your load order later, I can do that. So let me know in the comments if you want to talk about that, because my game, I like to think, is relatively stable and running nice and smooth. Very minimal crashes, and when I do have them, I typically know why. So if you want to see that, let me know. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you in any way in regards to your modding endeavors. So... If you did enjoy the video, consider dropping a rating and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one or any other Fallout modding content. Skyrim as well. So otherwise, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace. And hey, shout out to all of our patrons for their continued support. As always, your donations are greatly appreciated and help to fund videos just like this one. So again, thank you.